So, say number one. Say, my client, can you read number one for us, please? Number one. I would like roasted vegetables, Ralph replied. What are we missing from this sentence? What do we need to add to this sentence, my client? We need to add the commas and the... Okay, where do we need to put a comma? We put a comma in, like, we put a comma in the word, I would like roasted vegetables. After, okay, so we have our comma here. What else do we need? We put them Can into quotation. Okay, where do our quotation marks need to go? They go on the word, I would like roasted vegetables. Okay, so we need here and here. All right, is that it? Yes. Okay, good job. All right, Ming Hai, number two. Pete said, I have carrots. What's missing from the sentence? A quotation mark. Mm -hmm. And where does the quotation mark need to go? I have, a, I have carrots. Okay, so around, I have carrots. What else are we missing? A comma. And where does our comma need to go? Uh, next to the word set. Yeah after the word said. Okay, good job, Ming Hai. Okay, Feng Ling, number three. Would you like carrots, Pete asked. What are we missing here? So we need quotation marks here. Right? Yep. Okay. And what needs to go after, would you like carrots? Is that a statement or is that a question, Feng Ling? A question. So what needs to go at the end of a question? A question. Okay, so we put a question mark inside here. Good job, Feng Ming. Thank you. All right, Jenny, number four. I love carrots, Ralph exclaimed. What are we missing from this sentence? The quotation mark. And where do the quotation marks need to go? Before, I, and after the... This one? Yeah. After the exclamation point? Okay. Yeah. All right, is that it? Or do we need anything else? A comma. Where? At the Ralph exclaimed. Where do we need the comma? Before the Ralph. Do we need to use an exclamation point and a comma together like that? Uh, no, 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 no. No, because we have our exclamation point, so that's all the punctuation we need there. So that's it. Just quotation marks. All right, good job. All right, Vinny, number five. What are we missing from the sentence? Quotation mark. Where do our quotation marks need to go? To say. Mm -hmm. Okay, where else? Anna and favorite. Uh, your favorite. And what else are we missing? Comma. Where does the comma need to go? Before the, the rotation, uh, rotation mark. Inside here? Mm, yes. Yes. They are one of my favorites, said Pete. Okay, good job. So let's move on. Today we're going to talk about vocabulary strategy. So how can we figure out the meanings of words when we're reading a text? Okay, so we're going to practice idioms today. An idiom is a phrase that has a different meaning than the meaning of each individual word. So the group of words has a special meaning, and that meaning is different from each word by itself. So let's look at an example. So walking on eggshells. So if you see the phrase walking on eggshells, Amy, do you think that I'm actually putting eggshells on the ground and walking all over them? No. No. What do you think this phrase might mean instead? She's angry. She, she's angry? Okay, let's say I'm walking on eggshells. Am I angry or would someone else might be angry? So let me give you an Maybe example. Maybe uh, she's mm -hmm. angry? Mm, not the person. The person who's walking on eggshells might not be angry. So I could say, my mom is very angry today, so I'm walking on eggshells around her. So if mom's angry and I need to walk on eggshells, how might I be acting? Maybe I'm acting very angry. Mm, no, not angry. Let's see. P, do you have any ideas? I think uh, she will be silent. Maybe silent, right? Because if, if mom is angry, I'm walking on eggshells, I might be quiet, okay? What else, how else might I act around mom if she's very angry? Hong Mi, what do you think? I think that uh, silence. No silence. talking. No talking. Mm -hmm. Right? So we could say walking on eggshells just means acting carefully. 
We would act carefully around someone. Walking on eggshells doesn't mean putting eggs on the ground and walking on them. It means to act carefully around someone. Okay, let's look at some more examples and see if we can figure out the meanings of them. So I have the sentences. We're going to read the sentence and figure out what the idiom is and what the meaning is. So I practiced every day. I didn't want to slip up at my first game. So we have our idiom is slip up. So Zabel, when I say slip up, do you think I mean actually slip and fall on the ground? No. What do you think I might mean instead? Uh, uh, make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And what are some clues that tell you that slip up? So, so the boy or girl practiced every day because he or she didn't want to slip up at my his or her first game. All right, so we're practicing as a, someone's first game. We know that they probably don't want to make a mistake. So we can say slip up means to make a mistake. Okay, good job, Zabao. All right, let's look at another one. My friends and I like to hang around at the park after school. So what do we think the meaning of hang around is? Not Ming, are you there? Yes. Okay, so do you think when I say hang around, are my friends and I just going to hold on to a tree and hang there after school? No. No, what do you think hang around means? Going out with my friend. Mm-hmm. So we're going to say going out with. And what are some clues that helped us find the meaning of this idiom? Who am I hanging around with? My friend. My friend. Okay, and where do we like to do this? At the park. At the park. So what are some things that you might do at the park with your friends? Like play together. Uh-huh. Yep. So hang around just means to spend time with, right? You like to spend time with your friends at the park. Maybe you play, maybe you talk, maybe you, I don't know, play games. So hang around means to spend time with. All right. Good job, not Ming. Okay, so let's move on to look at some more examples. If we don't shake a leg, we'll be late. Let's look at the idiom, shake a leg. So what do we think the idiom shake a leg means? Anna, are you there? Yeah. All right, what do you think shake a leg means? Am I actually just going to stand around shaking my legs? Yes. You think so? Is that going to help me not be late? No. So... What am I going to do so I am not late? So if you are running late for school in the morning, what are you going to do? Shake And what do you think that means? Go quickly to school. Yep, exactly. So shake a leg just means to hurry up. Okay, so from this sentence, we can use context clues. Context clues. You don't want to be late, so you know you need to hurry up. All right, good job, Anna. All right, next one. Tim didn't want to get in trouble, so he was beating around the bush. Let's look at our idiom, beating around the bush. Am I going to take a baseball bat or a club and beat a bush? Ben, what do you think? Is this going to be telling the truth or, or not telling it? I think it's um, not telling the truth. Okay, yes, so I'm going to say not telling exactly what happened. It's beating around the bush. Okay, when you're avoiding saying what happened, maybe because you don't want to get in trouble. Okay, so beating around the bush is not telling exactly what happened. Okay, good job. His bad test grade was really sour grapes. So did this test turn magically into grapes that are sour? What do you think, Bebe? Did the test magically turn into grapes? Uh, no. No. So what do you think the meaning of sour grapes is? Do you know what the word sour means? Uh, yeah. What does sour mean? Is that something that tastes good or not so good? Like, not sweet. Mm -hmm. Not sweet. So what do we think? His bad test grade, is this good news or bad news? If you get a bad test grade, is that good news for you or is that bad news for you? The dinosaur, what do you think? Bad test grade, good news or bad news? Bad. Okay, so what do you think the meaning of sour grapes is in this sentence? Something that's good news or something that's bad news? Bad news. Okay, we'll say 
bad news or a bad situation. All right, good job. All right, next one. He was so angry, he yeah. almost blew his top. So what do we think the idiom blew his top means? Hoktai, is his head actually going to explode? No. What do you think it might mean instead? Um, I think it might mean that when he, uh, he was angry, so he very angry, so his face red, mm -hmm. and he's very, very angry. Okay. So we know. They say that he's blew his top. Yes. So when someone, when you hear someone almost blew his top, that means he's very, very, very angry. So if someone blew his top, how might he or she act? If a person blew his or her top. So Kwoktai said red face. What else might a person do? Would you be very quiet or maybe be yelling? Yelling. Yelling, right. Okay, so now we're going to read a story and then we're going to point out the idioms and then find the meanings of them. So listen as I read. Farrar is a farmer who brags about his cotton crop, but you'd never say he has a green thumb. He plants too early or he plants too late. I guess you could say he's out in left field. Always an optimist. Farrar likes to say, the rest is gravy. But Farrar, the farmer, is never in high gear. He thinks he has his ducks in a row, but there never was a slower, more confused cotton man. If you ask him a question, he's all over the map. Don't ever expect a clear answer. His wife wants him to get serious about farming. She tells him, fish or cut bait, but he won't. He's stubborn. Farrar will never say uncle. So let's look at the first one. He has a green thumb. What do we think this idiom means? He has a green thumb. Tell him for gardening. Yep. So if you have a green thumb, you have a talent for gardening. You're good at gardening. So Farmer Farrar, we know, is not, he does not have a green thumb. He is not good at gardening. Okay, let's look at the one out in left field. I guess you could say he's out in left field. What do we think this one means? Kang Huyen? He plants too early or he plants too late. So if he, does he really know what's going on? No. So what do you think out in left field means? What do we think it might mean? If you are out in left field. If he always plants too early or if he always plants too late, do you think he knows the good time to plant? No. So do you think he knows what's going on? No. Okay, so which letter says that one? Uh, H. H. Okay, so if you're out in left field, you have no idea what's going on. All right, so let's look at that. The rest is gravy. So always an optimist. Far likes the saying, the rest is gravy. So an optimist is someone who always thinks the best about a situation. They look at the situation, think, what is good in this situation? So the rest is gravy. What do we think this one means? We're talking about someone who always thinks the best out of a situation. Are things going to be easy or are things going to be difficult? Someone always thinks the best of a situation. Are we, yeah. do we think things are going to be easy or things are going to be difficult? Easy. Okay, do you see a letter that talks about things being easy? It's easy going from here. Okay, thank you. So the rest is gravy means everything's going to be easy from here. Okay, so now that we've gotten that one, hopefully the rest of this worksheet will be gravy. In high gear. So... Farrar the farmer is never in high gear. So he thinks he has all the, his ducks in a row, but there was never a slower, more confused cotton man. So he's never in high gear. What do we think this one means? Huang Mi, what do you think in high gear means? Do you think he's doing things quickly or slowly? Quickly. Okay, so to be in high gear means quick paced and fast. So no, letter D. Ducks in a row. He thinks he has his ducks in a row, but there has never been a there never was a slower, more confused cotton man. So what do we think ducks in a row means? Mikhail, can you help us? I think that ducks in a row is that 
well organized. Yep, you got it. So having your ducks in a row uh, means that you are well organized. So we know that farmer Farrar is not an organized farmer. What about all over the map? If you ask him a question, he's all yeah. over the map. Don't ever expect a clear answer. So what do we think all over the map means? Ben, what do you think? Doesn't stay to the main point. Yeah, good job. So when someone is all over the map, he or she doesn't stick to the main point. They're going kind of like beating around the bush. Right? You're not giving someone a direct answer. Fish or cut bait. So his wife wants him to get serious about farming. She tells him, fish or cut bait. So what do we think this idiom means? Fish or cut bait? Bebe, what do you think this one means? Yeah, give up or take action. If you tell someone fish or cut bait, are you telling that person to give up or to take action? Uh, take action. Okay, so fish or cut bait means to take action action okay. and our last one say uncle so here says he's stubborn farrar will never say uncle so what is the meaning of say uncle all right zabao what do you think say uncle means uh give up all right so when you say uncle that means you give up so we know farrar is stubborn he'll never say uncle or he'll never give up Homework for today is another page in your reader's notebook. So I'll send this one home. It's our idioms page. 183. So it says, read the web below. Write the meaning of each idiom. And you can look in the dictionary or Google it if you're not sure. Okay, so these are all idioms that have to do with your head. And then choose one of the idioms and then write two sentences. So in the first sentence, write the meaning of the idiom, and the second, replace the meeting with the idiom. Okay, is everyone ready for quizzes? There's the code. Go ahead and join.